Aloha, welcome to Sister Power. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. This conversation is part of the Sister Power series, Coronavirus Beyond Surviving to Thriving. Joining us from California, Dr. Valencia Ray, and from Chicago, Dr. Patricia Blessman. Valencia and Patricia, welcome to Sister Power. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Yeah. It's wonderful to be here. I'm Dr. Patricia Jones Blessman. I've got 20 years of experience as a, or more than that, 30 years of experience as a licensed clinical psychologist. I live in the city of Chicago. Um, and I just want to say thank you, Sharon, for uh, using this platform to empower and to educate your audiences. I really appreciate you for doing that, particularly now uh, in this season. Uh, in the last segment, in the Lessons and Blessings segment, you asked, what was my radical plan? Um, and, you know, we didn't have enough time to go into it in detail. So, um, but anyway, a radical plan is one that leaves no stone unturned, meaning I'm going to do, do whatever I need to do by any means necessary uh, to boost my immune system, uh, be at a healthy weight and reverse any chronic illnesses. That's for me or any of members of my family. Uh, uh, let's cue up that graphic. The reality is it is not prudent to simply wait the estimated 18 to 24 months for a vaccine that might not be effective. Current flu vaccines are 10% and at best 40% effective. According to the CDC, and this is their graph, over the past 10 years, increasingly more Americans have been getting sick from, hospitalized with, and dying from the flu. The numbers for the 2017-2018 flu, flu season are five to seven times that of what it was in, in 2010. Historically, African-American people have consistently suffered more and died more from the flu over the past 100 years. Mm. This flu season is a wake-up call and a clarion call to action. Now, in general, we don't have a health care system. We have a sick care system. I'm blessed to know Dr. Ray, who is among the leading cutting-edge physicians specializing in integrative functional medicine. It's state-of-the-art medical practice that focuses on promoting health and vitality. It is truly personalized down to understanding your specific DNA makeup with a thorough analysis and workup on how your unique body functions along with lifestyle and nutritional assessments. I'm fortunate to have Dr. Ray on my health team and she will share with you and our audience the wisdom she has shared with me. So she's a part of my radical plan, okay? <laughs> so have at it, Dr. Ray. Okay, thank you, Patricia, for that lovely introduction. And thank you, Sharon, so much for inviting me to be a part of this because this is really, really important to me as part of my life purpose and passion. And it's really important and relevant for our times. So I'm a traditionally trained physician. I started my career as an ophthalmologist. So I was an eye surgeon. And many of the chronic diseases that I, actually all of them really, that I saw constantly because the eye would be involved I'm now treating in uh, functional medicine. And also it's a way of reversing diseases uh, that the normal or the traditional system cannot access because we weren't trained. I had to go back and be fully retrained as a functional medicine physician. And then I've done other extra training beyond that. And it's not just about reversing chronic disease, although that's where we shine and that's where we're very unique it's also time for us to start yes. this conversation about preventing chronic disease. And so that would include mm -hmm. obesity and chronic disease. And obesity would be in this category too, because it actually causes at a physiologic level, a lot of the immune dysregulation that you're, you're hearing in the news right now. So I think that this time is, is such a time for this, that functional medicine uh, is a blessing and a gift for us to have at this time. Oh, great. Well, Dr. Ray, what is integrative functional medicine? Okay, so integrative is more of a uh, less descriptive term in that it's integrating 
traditional with different holistic practices and it's really uh, quite subjective however it is more it's about integrating different parts whereas functional medicine specifically is about functionality it's about getting to the root cause of your symptoms you see everyone's symptoms are a cry for help is the way i like to think about it in our body and what we're doing when we only use a pill for an ill medicine is putting like duct tape over that symptom. We're saying, be quiet, settle down, but it's not treating the underlying condition, which is still causing deterioration at a functional level in your body. Wow. So how is integrative functional medicine different from traditional medicine in their approach? Okay. So first of all, and I'll speak for, for myself in that functional medicine ideally is very system, systemic. So it's about mind, body, and spirit. So different practitioners may have different levels of how much of that they're integrating in. But because I have this interest in brain and mind and personality and uh, emotions and health, and truly have believed for decades already now that the mind and the body are connected. You know, it's not just cut off at the neck here. So when you have anxiety, you're gonna affect your health, you're gonna affect your body. And now we know from the cutting edge neuroscience research that your gut affects your brain. Your gut is communicating with your brain, that your gut has a brain. So functional medicine is able to address that at a systems level. And we have a different set of testing. Uh, I'm just shocked as a traditionally change, uh, a, tr a traditionally trained physician for over 30 years that, that since I've been in functional medicine, I am not only reversing things that we were taught in medical school that are incurable, but it's a way to empower people to be able to understand how to create health, how to maintain health in a way that they are not dependent upon me. They can take these skills and go forward in their life with it and pass it on. So I think that's really important. Great. What does functional medicine have to offer that is unique to facing coronavirus? Okay, so I'm going to talk about this uh, in two pieces. One would just be like, what can you do right now for COVID in terms of the functional medicine approach? It would be working with natural foods and natural supplements and lifestyle and some of just some just general tips that we know over time as uh, Dr. Patricia Blessman just showed you that chart from the CDC. This is really not new. Uh, I've known for decades now that six, uh, on average, anywhere from 30 to 60,000 people die every flu season. So this mm. it's just that it's getting a lot of media attention. And to me, that's really the only difference because I've known this for a long time. And so as you see from that chart, that is graphed from 2010 to 2017, and we've gone beyond that now. What's that, 45 million? <laughs> so Ooh. this isn't new. And so what I would say if in the middle of this, um, first and foremost, and I'm going to say this several times, do your very best to stop stressing. That is weakening your immune system. I'm going to say that again before the show is over. But on a typical, like what can you take kind of level. Well, the vitamins A, D, E, and um, uh, C, A, D, E, and C are very important. Vitamin C, while you may hear people say, well, there's no research, there, there are, there's plenty of empirical science behind it. Now, you may not find a big double blind pharmaceutical sponsored uh, research project on vitamin C, but it's helpful for, for vitamin as an antiviral and to protect you and to be an antioxidant. So that's something inexpensive and without side effects, you can certainly address. And then there are things like uh, some, many people have not heard of uh, N-acetylcysteine or NAC. Uh, that's good for respiratory, upper respiratory. It's a supplement, it's an amino acid, uh, liposomal glutathione. Some people have heard of glutathione, but I wanna emphasize it needs to be liposomal, which is a special form so it can be absorbed. And other things that you can do just at, in a general way are doing things like uh, making fresh ginger tea and eating ginger root, 
uh, those old old fashioned <laughs> natural herbs can really make a difference. Echinacea oh. for some people can be helpful, but I, that's one that can have some controversy depending on your immune state. Uh, and then generally, I would just say natural um, natural B vitamins can be helpful. If you have an infection in COVID, you can go in a different direction. I won't get too far in that. But was there something you wanted to say? Jane? Well, you know, I, I, this is just wonderful information. I know mental health is physical health, but I have a question for either one of you to answer that one of my friends have asked me to ask you, how does stress impact the immune system? Okay, so what I wanted to give even are like five keys to immune resilience. And I'll say that to answer directly first that question is the the adrenal gland, think, think of that as like a, a central station of your body's uh, system in general that we know very little about, about as individuals. We, we are just running our adrenals far past what they should be. But in doing so, it, it's affecting our immune system directly because what happens when you are hitting the four key stressors, which I'll cover in a moment later here, is that you are actually causing cortisol to be too high or something called uh, adrenaline. That's where we get the name adrenal. So that is epinephrine, norepinephrine. And these things together affect, the cortisol affects the blood sugar level and the immune system. And when we are eating bad food, so for example, I'll give you five keys and put it in this context is that one of the keys is sugar. Sugar is actually one of the four stressors too. It will ca cause your adrenals to become dysregulated and irregular. And it is very, very toxically inflammatory. So sugar is mm -hmm. something to avoid. And I know we have a lot of sugar addictions out here, so to speak. I used to be one of them. But there are things you can learn in functional medicine naturally to shift that. I, I don't I don't have the problem anymore. And it's it's really been life changing, <laughs> quite frankly. So that's one thing is avoid processed foods and sugar. Processed foods are inflammatory and that is that makes the immune system not happy either and affects the cortisol and, and this whole response because of many of the chemicals in it can affect things. Mm -hmm. A second key uh, to stress regulation, well it's important to learn stress regulation. Stress in and of itself has its purposes in the right context. And frankly, being overly excited can stimulate the same type of immune response. However, most of us in today's society, we're not struggling with being overly excited. It's usually overly afraid or uh, fear-based. We, we tend to be too focused on what we don't want and fear and the things that are going on right now, instead of keeping up to date and then turning it off. Because if you fall in this category, I would recommend you would turn off the TV because it's just literally stimulating your fight, flight, freeze, stress response, literally weakening your immune response. Because when you dump all this cortisol in the blood and norepinephrine and epinephrine, you literally are triggering uh, reactions in the body where you may hear these terms cytokine storm for some people, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're triggering all that. You're triggering inflammation. And that's why you, and if you're doing that, plus you're eating sugar, plus you're eating processed food, plus you're staying up late, plus you're not getting outside and getting any fresh air, you're sitting all day, it's a perfect storm. You know, so be aware of that. Uh, a third key is this big piece around lifestyle. We are talking about changing lifestyle and using Zoom and all of this, but what I'm not hearing enough about is the importance of lifestyle in your health. And we have to be super duper mindful that just sitting in front of a computer screen all day and sitting and then letting, in fact, I wanna say this right now, blue light, the, the bright white light from a computer screen after dark, after dusk in the evening, literally is throwing off your circadian rhythm. I and didn't know that. Say that again to our viewers, because we're all addicted almost to the computer all hours of the day, especially at night. Right. So on your phone, TV, computer, 
after you know an hour after sundown or so you're you're dropping your melatonin in your brain your melatonin helps you get a good night's sleep it's anti-inflammatory to the brain uh, people who have dementia often you will see low melatonin well I, what you can do is a simple practice first of all many of us have to stop all the technology it's just not good for us now if we're talking you're on the computer all day and now you're going to be on it in the evening well, you can you can see where this is going. So if you get yourself some from hot some high quality blue blocker, the kind of red lens to put on in the evening, at least that will help. And if you stop, you really need to stop at least an hour before bedtime. Okay. Or else you can disrupt the quality of your sleep as well. So lifestyle things include uh, making sure you stay connected with people. There are tons of studies and they're old studies and they're current studies but there's tons of studies that being socially isolated isn't healthy so right now we have this social isolation going on well make sure that you reach out and tell somebody by phone write a letter talk to them get on zoom something but don't isolate and hunker down and separate yourself from other people Mammals, humans, we are not made like that. That's that is very abnormal. So right. just be aware of that that you need to connect, exercise, mm-hmm. fresh air, and what I call like the three R's: restoration, you know, rest, and um, uh, recreate, uh, re- like re- restoration. So recreation and rest are three subtly different categories, but they're in, they need to be intentional. And then the fourth area I want to mention uh, for immune resistance is this weight category. Uh, Be be aware that it's important that we deal with our detox, inflammation. It's important that we um, learn that we can actually adjust our metabolism. That's something I didn't know. We can adjust, learn how to adjust our metabolism to become more fat burning. And that's how I got on top of my sugar addiction and lost weight and went back to my, you know, young adult <laughs> weight is, that's how you do it. It, it. And we didn't know that, I didn't know that in traditional medicine. We don't even learn nutrition in, in traditional medicine at all. And then the last thing I would say, what affects immune uh, resilience would be your hormones. Your, your hormones are tied directly into your adrenals as well, because if you're cortisol is running high and you have all of this uh, epinephrine, norepinephrine flying around, it can affect, especially in perimenopausal and menopausal women, it can really throw you off. Uh, It can affect thyroid very easily. So you can have high thyroid or low thyroid uh, with, it depends on which one as to what symptoms you have, but it can be anything from heart palpitations and anxiety if it's too high to fatigue and cold hands and feet and dry skin and hair falling out, you know, when it's too low. Okay, so, well, Dr. I'll- Ray, we're gonna take a quick break. We're gonna take a quick 60 minute, 60 second break and we'll be right back. Stay with us, people. Aloha, I'm John Davidan, the host of History Lens on Think Tech Hawaii. History Lens deals with contemporary events and looks at them through a historical perspective or what we call a history lens. Uh, the show is streamed live on thinktechhawaii.com. Thanks so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. Mahalo and aloha. Welcome back to Sister Power, and our topic for today is coronavirus beyond surviving to thriving. And we have a medical doctor and a clinical psychologist. And Dr. Ray, you were giving us some wonderful informative information about um, medicine, functional medicine. So briefly, 
Um, tell us what we were speaking about before the break. We were talking about the five essentials. Yeah, so essentially five keys to immune resiliency. And in summary, you can hear that when, as you have you know, listened to the recording earlier or the recording of this earlier, but it's essentially just understanding one, what can you do now with COVID that can be helpful to keep your immune system strong? And two, what, what are five keys you can do going forward to be aware of as you are moving forward, because this won't be the last virus and there are things that we can do to support our immune system resiliency. Okay, great. Well, Patricia, you're a cl clinical psychologist. Tell our viewers, have you found silver linings in these difficult times? You know, actually I have, Sharon. Um, I guess in some ways I get to be, I, I think I, 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 I get to go out of the, uh, or I get to peruse the luxury catalog of silver linings. Um, one of the, the biggest one is that my husband and I have really started to get way more focused about health, our health, his health. Um, quite frankly, he has high blood pressure and he's a, you know, a bit overweight. I'm a bit overweight. And, um, we've decided that you know this you know we really have to this has been a wake-up call for us to make some really strategic changes in our household and with our son now yeah we know we get some pushback from our son trust me he is not liking <laughs> the changes that are coming down the pipe but um but he, my husband and i are, are far more together about that and that is a good thing you know, God has given us these wonderful, wonderful bodies. And it's our job to be a good steward over these bodies that he has given us. And they are magnificent. And through um, Dr. Ray, I've learned, you know, just how magnificent this body really is. If you feed it correctly, mm -hmm. if you give it what it needs, if you take care of it, I mean, we probably take care of our car better than we take care of our bodies yeah. to some extent. Yeah, okay. right. I mean, well, right. so I'm just saying that we're going to change the focus on that. And that that's a big silver lining. Um, just in having these conversations, you know, in the in the groups that I'm that I'm a part of, I've been able to introduce other folks to functional medicine and, and Dr. Ray's work, as well as, you know, and to get a sense of, OK, uh, what are we going to do to create healthier communities? We're talking about this more in the city of Chicago. I'm, you know, I've been watching the news about um, the number of, uh, the disproportionate number of African-Americans that are um, dying from COVID here in Illinois. And we're talking about, well, how do we address food deserts, get access to food, as well as raising the nutritional quality for people who live here in, in the Chicago community? Um, these are all conversations that need to be had. And it's, and I, I think that some of the blessings that we are yet to see all of the blessings that are going to come forward. Um, I agree with we're that. We're just in the face of this. We're just, you know, I think that there's going to be something when there's going to be a new, we're not going to go back to what we had because that what we had wasn't working. So whatever mm -hmm. this new normal is, I'm looking forward to something that's going to be created, that's going to be regenerative, and that's going to be beneficial to all of us and not just to some of us. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Dr. Ray, how can viewers locate a functional medicine doctor if they yes. live in another state outside of Illinois and California? Right. So I'm, I'm licensed in California and Illinois. And just uh, to find me is my website, ValenciaRay.com. And then also I have a listing on the in Institute of Functional Medicine and there you can find a functional medicine doctor in your zip code. So it's the IFM, I, F as in Frank, M as in Mary, org. And when you go there, you can hit the click on find a practitioner and put your zip code in there. And that's how you can find people you know, in other states and countries, et cetera. Oh, great. What role does safe play during this crisis? As, that's open to either you, Dr. Ray, or Dr. Blessman. What role does safe play during this crisis? Safe play. Are you saying safe? Play? Yeah, we need we need to put ourselves in some type of safe uh, mindset 
uh, with okay. all the news going on. You did briefly mention it for the people who are just tuning in. If you can just briefly go over that, it, fear is part of one that you don't want to live in fear at all. Okay. Yeah. So I'll just say real quickly, one easy thing to do is not to put in your face the, the news that's negative that you can't do anything about because it creates, from a neuroscience standpoint, you're creating a sense of helplessness, which is going to cause you to feel depression and throw off your immune system, et cetera, et cetera. And I will say what certainly keeps me rock solid is my faith. All right, <laughs> so, me too, hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's spirituality uh, that uh, it can just be, you know, the peace of God that passes understanding. So at the end of the day, uh, that's where I put up my main marbles on and then everything else comes, you know, logic and whatever can come after that. <laughs> Patricia? Okay. Well, I, I, I'm in agreement that first of all, you, you, it's important that you just don't uh, stay inundated with 24-7 uh, obsessing over the news and, and, and attuning to that. Um, you know, pick a couple of sources that you're interested in or that you feel comfortable with and maybe, you know, in, and limit it to no more than 90 minutes a day. I mean, and that's still a lot, 90 minutes. Um, but beyond that, I think what's important is to be able to take this time and figure out how you can make the most of it for yourself and for your family. Um, what are you going to do that's going to be different? What, how can you take advantage of this time together? For example, my son and I have really gotten into playing more board games. Uh, he's teaching me how to play some of his video games. And it's been really interesting watching, you know, I mean, just watching the things that he's interested in and, and connecting with him at his level and what he wants to do. Um, my spouse and I are, are starting to do, you know, starting to have some deeper conversations. We picked up um, there's a couple of games out there that have like questions and stems and you, you know, and you, 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 you ask the question and you can have deeper conversations, of, you know, around that. Um, for example, you know, three months from now, where would you, where would you, which, if you could go anywhere, where would you want to go and who would you want to go with? Something like that. Um, uh, you know, so there are, you know, creating, it is, it's vital that we, you create a sense of safety and a, as you say, safe place. Yes. Because emotional security is important because that's mm -hmm. what's going to keep you, we can't be on this high edge all the time. We can't, yeah. you know, at some point we have to have some emotional equilibrium. Well, you thank you, Dr. Ray. You know, we have so much information. You ladies have so much good knowledge for us. And 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 thank you so much, Dr. Valencia Ray. Thank you, Dr. Patricia Blessman. Uh, we appreciate you. In closing, Sister Power yes. conveys its heartfelt sympathy and condolences to all those who have lost loved ones. And in many cases, multiple family members we pray for the restoration of health to those infected with this dread disease. There are lessons to be learned as to how our foreparents faced and overcame same tragedies through their spiritual faith, through their unceasing demand for equal rights and justice in America, and through various individual and collective acts of selfless service to those in need. From all of us at Think Tell Kavai'i and Sister Parr, please take care of yourself and each other. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough.